Coach? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. Exciting day and um, fired up about the new group of Wildcats that we have joining us. Uh, I believe uh, we're able to announce 26 total today uh, with our priority walk-ons. And you know, the, the entire group is obviously incredibly successful academically, uh, just terrific young people, and uh, their on-the-field success, I think, uh, speaks for itself with the, the amount of wins and five of the young men competing for state championships. So a bunch of thank yous before we move forward. Uh, our recruiting office, Chris Bowers, uh, Mike Jasinski, Brian Payton, Christian Sarkeesian, and Chris Clark, that group does an outstanding job. Our staff and our, our wives, uh, more importantly, uh, do a great job sharing their husbands and, you know, 10 different states on the, on the signing class that we're signing, per se, uh, and you include a few more with our priority walk-ons. A lot of travel. A lot of folks in the athletic department to thank, uh, Kristen Kane and our academic support staff, Jana Blay, who's our uh, liaison to admissions, Aaron Hosman, and our compliance staff, especially Jane that was in this morning at 5.30 uh, to work with us, our athletic training staff, uh, our equipment staff, and obviously Jim Phillips, who uh, you know takes his time to meet with prospects, uh, and we can't thank him enough for doing that. Chris Watson, our dean of admissions, and, uh, and then obviously Morty Shapiro, our president, uh, you know, on our big official visit weekend, you know, all the parents, the highlight was listening to Jim and Morty. And it's not a surprise or spectacular. But then most importantly, our players. Uh, you know, the, they take their time to host unofficial visitors, to host then when guys come on their official visit. Uh, they're our best ambassadors, and they're, they're absolutely outstanding guys. Uh, and we appreciate what they do for, for us in recruiting. Like I said, we had 10 states in the, in the young men that we signed. Um, eight on offense, 10 on defense, and then uh, one, one kicker. Uh, they were 199 and 89, so great success. Uh, the average GPA was a 3.55. I think it's the smartest group of guys that we've recruited, and, uh, and I'm not surprised. Uh, we only offered 85 total players in the country, um, and we probably had less of that with relationships, but if you look at that with signing 19, um, you know, that's about 22% hit ratio, I think, if my math is right, somewhere around there. Is that right, Chris? Is that right? Yeah, I, I didn't major in economics. So, um, you know, that's that's pretty spectacular, the hit ratio. And that's how we go about it. It's about building relationships. It's about people. It's not about um, flash. It's about getting the right fit. And, uh, you know, I think our staff does a terrific job of that. You know, 18 of the young men were committed to us before their senior year. And then one, you know, during his senior year, uh, six commitments were before the end of March. And so that just shows you the acceleration in recruiting. And then I think Blake was committed for 14 months. So it's, um, it's spectacular to have those guys uh, continue to follow through with their commitments and then uh, uh, end up signing. And then 16 of the 17 guys that uh, we ended up signing today took the same official visit weekend. And if you include the two early enrollees, I guess you'd say 18 out of 19 uh, were, were there on the same weekend. So uh, this group is tight knit. Uh, they've been uh, on a group chat for a long time, getting to know each other and uh, just excited to get them here uh, in a few months. So uh, with that, again, thanks for being here. And how about some questions, please? Hello, Coach. My name is Astasia Williams. Um, you say this is a very tight-knit group. So now, where did the name Savage Cat 17 come from? Yeah, uh, it's all about the hashtag, right? Um, yeah, our recruiting office spends a lot of working out, a lot of, a lot of hours, analytics, right? Um, what other things should I say, Louie, that'll be sexy here? Uh, I don't know. They just brainstorm, Bowers, right? You guys brainstorm. And it's, what is it, New View? With New View 18 after the hashtag. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's a very, let me go back to that group of spectacular men and Chris, Mike, Brian, Christian, and, and Chris Clark. I mean, they're, they're really creative. So bad, so bad. Hi, Coach. Um, so you guys are graduating a couple of defensive linemen, Fadi and uh, C.J. Robbins, but you have a, a ton of guys coming in at the top, at the top of this class with um, Kent and then obviously Ernest Brown and, right. and Sam Miller. Um, was that sort of an emphasis to put on this recruiting class since you knew you were, you were graduating a couple of starters? Well, I think you always have to maybe be a couple of years out in anticipation of, of depth needs. And sometimes things are out of your control that you, you, you can't anticipate. But we, we have always got to do a great job up front. You know, the Power Five conferences are all line of scrimmage leagues. Uh, for us to continue to take the steps to be successful on the field, we've got to improve on the line of scrimmage. 
And, um, you know, I think this group on both sides, offensively and defensively, are going to help add competitive depth. Where does that go and how does that all play out, you know, to be determined? You're right, I'll know a lot more about Sam with him being early enrolled than I will maybe about uh, Trevor and Ernest when they, when they get here. But uh, there's no question for us to take the next steps. We've got to continue to solidify that competitive depth on the line of scrimmage. You're talking about those next steps. So I, I, I know you always want big things for the next year, but do you yeah. expect even bigger things next year, 17 of 22 starters coming yeah. back? coming off the bowl win, I would sure. assume this is a very hungry group. Yeah, Megan, I, I think based on what I've seen right now from workouts, and again, I've seen more of recruits than I have of our players. I've only been on campus now for Saturday, Wednesday, three days, you know, where I've been since the bowl game, I've been on the road every day. So, uh, you know, but in constant communication with Jay Hooten and our strength staff, total different attitude where we're at right now than where we were at a year ago. First of all, I think it has to do with injuries. We had a lot of postseason surgeries a year ago. Uh, we weren't able to practice the way we wanted to leading up to the Tennessee game. I think it showed on the field. We were healthier going into the end of the season this year. I think the way we were able to prepare for our bowl challenge at the Pinstripe Bowl, and then the way that the guys, I think, embraced what, where we were looking at that game. A great last chapter for our seniors, but then a huge opportunity for, for the future with the amount of young players and the returners that we had coming back. So I think we really developed over that month, and we've carried that momentum over now. In, into our first, I, I guess you'd say, three weeks of, of workouts. And then we'll start spring ball here in, in a little over two weeks. So I, I feel very confident that the guys are taking the steps. Now we're in the foundational phase, right? The, I mean, every team dies and is reborn at the same time. The 16, 17, so to speak, team died. Now it's a 17, 18 team. Uh, and, and we're in the foundation stages. So I like where we're at. I like the attitude. I, th I think the, the depth that we were able to gain out of the experiences, good and bad last year, uh, will hopefully uh, le lead to us taking the necessary steps. But definitely different feel you know, where we're at right now than maybe where we're at this time last year. Hey, Coach. Hi, Luke. Um, a couple of the things the NCAA is considering is the early signing day in December and then the possible earlier right. official visits right. in the spring there. Sure. What's your take on those developments? I think there are two uh, positive first steps. I think there are two necessary first steps, the change in the, in the recruiting rules. I, you know, I think I've been pretty outspoken that I believe this model is, is broken. I, I think any extreme uh, change w w would, would get stopped by the conferences. I, I just think this is, these are the first two steps. You know, I, I think we, we've got to improve transparency in the process. I think we have to do what's right for the student athletes coming out of high school and their coaches and their families. I think we have to take into consideration our assistant coaches and their quality of life. And then our student athletes and, and how much, you know, we're asking them to do when we bring prospective student athletes to campus. So it's a balancing act, right? And, and, and that's a challenge in and of itself. You know, I still think with where technology is today, we, we can improve this even more. I mean, I, I've heard more and more schools that, creating these new phrases like non-committable offer and, and I think I don't even know what those things mean um, and, and it's very confusing to me on what some coaches are doing and you know I, I think it's not hard I think if we were to offer a scholarship we should be able to click a mouse if kids qual you know qualifies for us academically let 72 hours cool off we can't sign them we can't pressure them but 72 hours later, maybe the NCA could issue a national letter of intent to kick and sign if he wants. Take a whole lot of pressure off, I think, uh, what's going on. A kid wants to sign, great. If he doesn't, great. You know, and then there's a lot of things that would have to go along with it, right? If we fill up, we fill up. If head coach gets fired, you know, things of that nature. But um, we're, it's very antiquated. And, and I would love to go back to 1985 where we didn't talk to seniors. You know, we didn't talk to kids till they were seniors. And we took the train back to the station and all that. But... I, I think that that's – I think we're way beyond that. I think we have to look forward and how we can improve. But I think those two, directly to your question, uh, I, I think are two positive steps, and I hope pass for, for student athletes. I mean, I would think 18 of our 19 guys would probably have signed the third week in December. And, you know, now my January, our January, their January, their second semester, their senior year, wrestling, basketball, whatever they're getting ready to go do, maybe has a totally different feel. Um, 
than, than it may now. So that will become the signing day. That will become signing day. I mean, you'll have very few guys not sign, I, I would think. What are the stats? Like 74% of kids are committed by October and 93% stay committed. And the, the state who are committed sign. So, you know, you just do that math. You're going to have an overwhelming majority of kids, I believe, sign in December. That's what I would, that's what we will anticipate. Pat, what were the, uh, what were the main areas you wanted to address with this 2017 class? Well, I think always we start with the fit. You know, we, we, we're looking for a special young man. We've got, uh, I, I think, uh, a group of guys that are coming in that fit exactly who we are. And, and you know, I think the most overused word now is culture. Um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It must be in a lot of books because a lot of coaches are using it. You know, I, I, you know, we've always talked about our fit, who we're looking for as a young man. And, you know, our, our uniqueness starts with our academic profile. And if you fit our academic profile, then we're going to be really excited about getting to know you. Uh, one of the areas then you get to know a young person after there's the academic fit is the easy way is to watch your video and, and to see whether or not they have the necessary skill set. Um, you know, and I, I make jest of it. And I'm not making fun of Chris and our recruiting staff and our coaches, but, you know, Stacy and I have been together since I was 15. It's not hard to find a Big Ten football player on tape. You know, if it doesn't jump off to you pretty quickly, he's probably not a Big Ten level player. So, um, you know, to be able to watch the tape and, and, and if they don't, after that highlight tape, that appetizer, don't get you excited, you're probably moving on. But for us, the thing that takes the most time is figuring out who the kid is. You know, who is this young person? Um, and I think that's where we're seeing a little bit of this recruiting acceleration with some schools that are making these non-committable offers. Yeah, you're offered a scholarship, but hey, it's like, let's get married, and we haven't even dated. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So the way that we look at it's a little bit different from a standpoint of how can we best get to know a young person and his family before we offer them to make sure we're offering the right fit. And if we do that, then, then the other things take care of themselves. Um, but, you know, every year you're going to want to sign a quarterback. You know, every year you're going to need to solidify your offensive and defensive line. You're going to try to anticipate two years out where you may have some graduation, graduational needs. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I think we filled all of our needs positionally. We're always trying to add, add speed. Um, and solidify the line of scrimmage, and I think we did that with this class. Coach, what yeah. does the success of a walk-on like Austin Carr do for a group of preferred walk-ons yeah. who are on that path? I mean, how much does that help when you have conversations with them that they could potentially earn a really big role on this team? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you look back at the tradition that we've had with our priority walk-ons, uh, it's spectacular. I mean, I'll go back to when I played with, with Barry Gardner, uh, you know, ended up, I mean, and the list goes on and on. Um, you know, the last year with Austin, you know, J.B. Butler from Jolie Catholic, you know, starting for us. Uh, again, I'm leaving out a lot of guys. Um, you know, Joe Bergen made two tackles in the, in the pinstripe bowl on the kickoff team. You know, they're, they're the backbone of your program. You know, they're the guys that have the academic credentials to get into school on their own and, and just want to play Big Ten football. And, and, you know, maybe they turn down scholarships. Maybe they turn down playing at a lower level because they want – the full package. They want to play at the highest level and play Big Ten football, and they want to also have the opportunity to, to achieve one of the highest rated academic experiences that there is in the world. And, and that's a special young man. I mean, if I'm a CEO in Fortune 500 America, the first thing I'm doing is calling myself and probably Coach Shaw at Stanford and saying, can I talk to you about your walk-ons? Because I'm going to try to hire them first. Um, and, and uh, you know, Austin is a prime example of that. You know, a young man that goes into his senior year with less than 50 receptions and then ends up being, you know, a Blitnikoff finalist. I mean, the credit goes to him. Obviously, the job that Dennis Springer did developing, developing him. Uh, but, but, you know, AC put in a ton of work. And I think that's a great inspiration to any young man, that if you have a great attitude and you give everything that you have, uh, you can achieve all your dreams and your goals. And, and AC is a great example of that. Coach, um, five recruits from Texas in this yeah. class, and I, I believe a few more from Georgia as well. Right. Um, so how do you guys go, sort of go down there um, and, and sort of, I, for lack of a better word, steal these recruits away from like those Big 12 right. schools and those SEC schools? And is that any sort of emphasis for you guys when you are making a new class? Yeah, we're going to start and end our recruiting here in Chicagoland. We always have. All nine of our assistants have a recruiting area here in Chicagoland and then throughout the state. Uh, and we're, we're then going to start to permeate them out uh, throughout the Midwest footprint, which obviously makes a ton of sense. 
Uh, we've got three coaches at their primary recruiting areas, Ohio. We've signed five players out of Ohio again this year. Um, you know, when I look at the, the history of Northwestern football, you know, my, and my good friend, Coach Parsegian, you go back to when we were number one in the country. Outside of the Chicagoans, Ohio was critically important to that team's success. Now that we've got BTN, now that our brand is being, you know, beyond just, uh, you know, maybe a few other stations that maybe talk about you nationally and obviously you get covered locally, um, our brand is very strong throughout the country, especially in the state of Texas. And we've got three coaches in, in Texas uh, that spend, again, when they leave Chicagoland, uh, that's where they spend a, a ton of their time. And it's, uh, it's two states that are very, very important to us. Yeah, I mean, you go down to the state of Texas and you beat Texas on a, on a defensive player, that's big. You know, you go to Georgia and you beat the University of Georgia, it's big. Uh, it's not a surprise to us because, A, our coaches that go down there are, are veteran coaches. They've built great relationships with the high school coaches in, the, in those areas. Uh, and, and I think if you were to talk to the, the families and the players that we signed, uh, we're very honest. I mean, we're going to tell young people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear in this process. And for young men that fit who we are into their families, I think that that's a breath of fresh air uh, compared to some of the other uh, things that they've heard. And uh, it's a great credit to our coaching staff uh, for building those relationships. Uh, and, and we're not going to stop. You know, I think we're building now a, a brand that nationally is seen as a winner. Uh, you know, you look at our 12 year track record of never backing out of a commitment, our 12 year track record of graduating all of our players, our 12 year or 11, soon to be 12 year, I should say, I guess, 11 year track record of success on the field. Uh, you know, I, I think it's not, we're not selling something maybe will happen down the road. We're selling something that's real. Um, and, and that selling standpoint is just quite frankly, educating the families. You know, or I think a lot of other schools sell, sell this and sell that. We just do it from an educational standpoint and really talk about who we are, what our identity is. And I think for a lot of families that, you know, that, that 40 year decision instead of just a four or five year decision just really makes an impact on them. And then they get around our players and, and the guys the, as prospective student athletes fall in love with our young men. And, and to us, that we can't, that's why I'm excited about the early opportunities to bring young people to our campus. Um, you know, if, you have a, if you're a family of means uh, financially, you can get around and do unofficial visits to, to different schools outside of maybe just being able to drive. Uh, unfortunately, the young, fam the young men from families that don't have a lot of means might not get a chance to come see a Northwestern if they're in Texas or Georgia or Florida uh, or outside of the Midwest footprint. And now with us potentially going to early official visits, you know, we're going to probably go from 23, 24 official visitors, you know, or max that I think it's 56 official visitors. We're going to probably use all those uh, as we move forward. And I think that's going to give a, a whole other group of young men an opportunity to, to get around our players, which I think is going to be a huge, huge uh, opportunity for us to sign even more young people. Hey, Coach. Mentioned even going back to 1985. What's the biggest change since you first started as a head coach here? Uh, as in in recruiting? Terms of recruiting, yeah. These things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, technology. I mean, there, you know, you, it's it's changed exponentially. I mean, we we still have this thing called the uh, spring recruiting phone call that we technically get a chance to call a prospect one time uh, in the in the month of April or May. I talked to 15 juniors this morning by shooting him a text message last night to call me. You know, I mean, we, we have a very antiquated deal. Uh, so the, obviously the technology, the ability to communicate has, has changed everything exponentially. Positive side of that, I just described the negative side of that. Um, you know, I'm going to Margaritaville on Saturday and that phone is not going to be on except for our players. And, our, and uh, that's it. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty pathetic life that I have to live with my thumbs. I love you. You're so good. You know, all that stuff. It's, it's pretty pathetic. When dealing with prospects out of state, uh, do conversations come up with parents about Chicago, about violence, about some of the headlines in the national news? And yeah. How do you, what do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, any topics come up, any and all topics come up. And, and again, I think it goes back to that education, you know, and I think you talk uh, in terms of facts, you know, and, and, you, and you, that's, that's where you go. And, and um, uh, you know, I think the, the obviously the Evanston community and, and where Northwestern's located and, um, you know, it's a pretty unique setting and a pretty special community and, and uh, a very diverse community with, with uh, a melting pot of races and religions and, and things of that nature uh, that I think are very appealing to young people as they're looking at a college experience. 
uh, that, that, that especially when you look maybe across uh, the country is maybe one of the more unique college towns uh, in America. But then you, you look deeper and you, and you show facts and you talk about those things. And, um, you know, I think our, the parents and the families that we recruit, I think they appreciate that, that we're going to talk in terms of facts and honesty. And um, I, I think that's why we're able to build really rock, really rock solid relationships. Uh, no doubt Northwestern takes a lot of pride in the character of their guys. Right. Uh, when you're recruiting, you talked about, you know, when you're watching the film, they have to stand out as a Big Ten player. They have to meet a certain bar when it comes to academically. Sure. Uh, how do you determine the moral fiber of a guy, and how does that play into yeah. how aggressively you recruit them? Yeah, that's the art, I would say. You know, we have a, a, a blueprint of values that we believe in, and that's kind of where our coaches start, uh, starting to dig into whether or not there's that fit, you know, from an attitude standpoint, work ethic, you know, respect, and then you can just keep going down the line of, of areas that we believe fit our, our locker room, fit what we're looking for for our campus. Um, and then you've got to overturn every stone when it comes to that. You know, first and foremost, kids are going to give you that evidence on, on social media. And, and, you know, you go back to 1992, that didn't happen uh, when I was being recruited. Now they're just naive enough to think that the Snapchat goes away. You know, that it doesn't, you know, and, and that the Instagram picture, it, it, they're all there. You've just got to, you know, t peel some of the layers off. The and you're going to miss some things. I mean, I think the expectation on us to be perfect as coaches, I, I think, is a little bit unrealistic. You try to exhaust all avenues, and sometimes you miss some things. Um, and then you deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. But um, I think that spot, that, that, that transparency, I, th I think the um, – the light shined on, on prospects is hard. I think being 17, 16, you know, really starting 15, 16, 17 years old right now, it's hard to make mistakes that, that I made and, and that I guess my peer group made uh, because you're gonna probably be out. We're not gonna be able to recruit you um, and, and things of that nature. Then you get, you know, the assistant coaches get in the building and they start talking to the high school coach. They talk to the position coach. They talk to the guidance counselor. Uh, they talk to the principal or assistant principals. I mean, I was at a school um, last week, and when I was meeting with the head coach, I met with three assistant principals or four. I met with the guidance counselor, you know, just talking about who this young person is. And what's kind of cool for me is, you know, again, um, I go all over the country to recruit our players. And it's so funny, I keep hearing from those folks in the building, he's the best kid we've ever had. You know, he's unbelievable. He's, uh, he's giving in the community. We have a peer mentor pro. I mean, they go and they're going on and on in the high school. I've been doing this for 35 years. I've never had a kid like this. And I, I listen to coach and I take my notes and I go, you know, the neat thing for me, coach, and I'm pretty, uh, pretty blessed in this way. I've got 111 other young people just like him up on campus. So can you imagine having your whole locker room just like this and their jaws drop? And so, yeah, I'm biased. And, and you know, I believe our guys are, are spectacular and it's not just unique to us. Uh, but that's the privilege that we have as a coaching staff, coaching young people like ours is, is, is that that's who they are, and it's because be, they come from great families, and it's not just they all have mom and dad. Some are mom only, some are dad only, some are grandma, grandpa, auntie, whatever it may be. But the, that family unit really, I think, pressed hard into, into that young person about making the right choices, doing the right things, associating, associating yourself with the right kind of people, uh, doing the right things academically. And, and like I said, the, the easiest part is the football side for us. Um, and I know that we're not perfect for everybody, and I know that every young man doesn't fit us, but I think as we continue to climb the mountain of being a championship program, it's just solidified more and more to me that who we are is what makes us who, special and unique, and we've got to continue to push that envelope to recruit that fit harder and harder because I think it's a pretty unique group of guys, and when they have that shared vision, man, look out. You know, you got a chance to have something special, and, and I think we're really close to that right now. Coach, uh, how young does the process typically begin in the recruiting world? I mean, are there even people like showing up to North Shore Griffins games in the TCFYL or TCYFL? TC oh, I, yeah. I don't know. Um, I sure hope not. You know, um, I, it, it's probably too young, you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, especially having three young boys. You know, I, I really hope they fail a lot in sports, you know, and learn how to deal with that. You know, I think we have a bigger issue with, with parents saying, I've got to get a personal trainer and he's 12, you know, and, and a quarterback coach and he's 10. 
I, I let them play a lot of sports. You know, we, we love recruiting multi-sport athletes because their roles are different. Maybe in football, they're, they're the best, and in baseball, they're not. Or in wrestling, they're just a role player in a team. Those are all great life lessons that you need to learn because that's what's going to happen for you when you get to college. Not everybody's going to walk in and be a starter. Not everybody's going to walk in and be all Big Ten. Uh, you're going to have to earn roles. You're going to have to get knocked down and get up. You're going to have to learn how to deal with success. I mean, all those life lessons you hope they learn as they're growing up. Uh, and unfortunately today, I think in the world of specialization, I think parents are really missing it. I really do. And, and um, you know, we're, the, the staff laughs at me a lot. I, I have a hard time offering a scholarship to a kid that doesn't have a license. I think your whole world changes when you go from 15 to 16 as a young man. You know, I think that newfound freedom of actually not having mom or dad drop you off at the party <laughs> is a whole nother deal, is a whole nother, at least it was for me. And I made a lot of mistakes and I was able to learn and grow. And right now that expectation is a little bit different on young people. Um, so I wanna see how they deal with, with that responsibility and, and, and move forward. Now I say that and we've offered kids in the 19 class. Now we know a lot about them. It's pretty rare, but it, there's only a couple, but you know, not only the 18, but the 19 class. Uh, that's a little scary to me, uh, and we'll be very selective with who that is. Uh, but we, we need to know everything about that person. Uh, so that means they need to have been on campus. We need, need to be in their building a couple times uh, and things of that nature. Go ahead, guys. Fire away. Coach, I wanted to ask um, about one of your preferred walk-ons, um, Joe Spivak. Yeah. Um, sort of, how, how did you guys find out about him, and how did you sort of convince him to come here instead of, yeah, I believe he had an offer from Michigan State? Yeah, well, you know, I'll speak about our relationship with Joe Spivak and his family. You know, Co Bob Hefner coached his father at Illinois State, which we thought might be a liability because, you know, Hef's a knucklehead. But be besides that, that great relationship. and. Uh, it, it started there. I think Joe's been in our football camp since he was in the first grade. I mean, I don't know. He's been here for a long time. And, um, you know, a young man that we've known a lot about. And um, just excited to have him, like the rest of his classmates, join our football family. And, and uh, you know, I think there's a handful of guys in this class that had scholarship opportunities at other schools. But they, they, they're looking at a decision. You know, and I talked to every young person about, do me a favor, when you leave here and you go home tonight, after you write your notes about your experience and your visit, and you start your journal, just take five, 10 minutes and double your age. Go from 16 to 32, you know, go from 17 to 34. Where do you wanna be? Where, where are your dreams? You know, there's a high, high likelihood, especially with the new collective bargaining agreement, you're not gonna be playing the National Football League anymore at that age, unless you're gonna be a Hall of Famer first ballot. So where do you see yourself in life? And, and do you see Northwestern being the catalyst to get you there? Um, and, and I think, and again, I don't wanna speak for Joe, but in our conversations, that, that's what he saw in this process. Um, and again, this is a relationship business and, and our job as coaches is to develop young people to be the best they can be in all aspects of their life. And I think Joe knows our program as well as any. Uh, and we're excited to have him join us. And coach, how helpful has it been to be able to point to the new facilities coming during the recruiting process? Yeah, again, you know, when you, you talk about relationships, you talk about people, you know, we talked about already our players, we talk about our staff, you know, you, you know, leadership and, and from Jim Phillips and Morty Shapiro and, you know, our board of trustees. And then you show commitment and, and commitment is in one area, fan support, selling your stadium out, game day atmosphere, uh, areas of, of things that y you hope you improve in every year, right? Uh, other areas, facilities. And, um, you know, it's an area that we've obviously, and it's well documented, we, we're well behind, we're very, we're far behind where we need to be. And to see the type of commitment that we have moving forward and, and to know, you know, this class of 18, this group's gonna be in there, you know, during their freshman year. And now the class that we're actively recruiting, their juniors gonna be seniors, will be in there their entire career um, is, is a game changer for us. Um, I appreciate our guys that are in our locker room that have been patient. Um, and I appreciate their families. Uh, it's been a process and I appreciate the work that's gone into making this a reality and to see the steel up now on the lakefront, uh, you know, is, is, uh, is humbling. It's awesome to know that we're getting that type of support. But I think we're just getting started. You know, we've got a lot of room for improvement in, in, in uh, you know, not only our day-to-day -day facilities, but then down the road with Ryan Field and that's, that's coming. Uh, and, and all those things are exciting, I think, not only for the young men that we're recruiting, but I think more importantly, again, for our fans. 
you know, I, that's that's who I think about when I start thinking about Ryan Field. Now we got we got to really improve, you know, our game day experience for our fans, and and uh, I'm excited about, you know, getting down that road here in the near future. Yeah. I know that spring and summer workouts will play a big role in this answer, but what kind of an impact can this 2017 class potentially make on the field next year? You're talking about the young man we just signed mm -hmm. like four hours ago? Yep. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of done predicting. Um, I'll leave that to Louie and his guys on the Internet um, on where guys are going to end up going. I, I think more importantly, like I challenged – Every guy that I have the privilege of sitting in their, in their home, you know, the last thing I say to them is the advice that I wish I would have paid more attention to for my family when I was their age. You know, you guys all remember the last half of your senior year in high school? That was one heck of a party. I mean, this is a time when it's the last time, man, we get to do this and the last time we get to do that. And I made a lot of bad choices, a lot of bad mistakes during the last half of my senior year that I look back you know, my goal was to achieve, to get a to get a scholarship, and my goal should not have been that. And I operated that way for about a year and a half. That I was just happy to have a scholarship, and I really challenge our guys to finish what they've started. Finish first of all academically. You know, the the, the habits they finish with will be the habits they show up to summer school with. Finish doing the right thing socially. I mean, this will go away if they make the wrong choices. I, and I'm very clear with them on that. And I put it in writing on their on their, on their Big Ten tender that if you make bad choices socially and academically, that I'm gonna avoid this scholarship or I'm gonna suspend you. We're not gonna tolerate those type of behaviors. And I say it very crystal clear in front of their families. And then I strongly encourage them to finish what they've started athletically. If they're playing basketball, if they're wrestling, if they're getting ready to run track or play baseball or volleyball, depending on where they're at, I want them to do a great job. You know, we're gonna send them a workout plan after today. And I expect that they'll follow those things because the, what they do between now and summer school will be the opportunity to make a first impression uh, to their class, uh, to their, their future teammates. But they need to finish what they started. And so I share all that with them because the head coach, this guy, failed at that. And so that wisdom that I try to, to, to give them, I hope they, they hope they follow because they only got one chance to make a first impression, and I hope they do a good job of it. Hey, Dan. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm, I'm stoked for Chris, you know, um, and his staff. I, I, I was excited when, you know, Jim asked me to be a little bit a part of the recruiting aspect, uh, you know, with Chris and I being two Chicagoans, and we talk about Chicago's Big Ten team. I think it's pretty unique. I don't know. Probably a good study. Uh, are, is there any other Power Five school that both the head football coach and head basketball coach are from that, that town, and, um, or, or in our case, uh, city? And, um, you know, I think we're – we're a lot alike in, in, in a lot of ways, and, and, um, and, and I think we run our programs very similar. I think he's, he's got great passion and has a, a great plan. I think we both really fit uh, what Northwestern's expectations are in a leadership role. Um, and so to, to, to start our relationship that way, uh, back in the recruiting aspect of when, when uh, Mike Poliski and Jim were trying to, to get Chris in, in interested here, to see the plan that he and his staff have had it's not a surprise to anybody in our football staff. We, we spent, and after Chris's first year, we invited, we do a staff retreat, and we invited Chris and his staff to be a part of it with our staff. Uh, and it, it was great to start that bond and to build that bridge um, and, and to see their success is not a surprise. And then you go a step further. You know, our players are very close with his players. Uh, I don't know if you saw in the student section on Saturday, all of our guys, I mean, Justin Jackson's right there in the middle, uh, you know, cheering that group on. Uh, it's not a surprise to us. And, and again, it, it reminds me a lot of when we were able to turn things around when I was a player. So it's exciting and not to have, I think, the momentum that we've been able to have in football sustained in men's basketball, I think is just going to continue to build our athletic department and build our, our brand. And so it's exciting to us. Uh, you know, I think I'd, I'd like to hope that and they think that they know that we're their biggest fans and, and fired up. And, and they got, what is it, nine more games? You know, so I think they're just getting started. You know, so hopefully it'll, it'll finish the right way. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you for the start of spring football in four weeks. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Go Cats.